In this lesson, we are looking at how congruent parts of congruent figures are congruent. The essential question is, what can you conclude about two figures that are congruent? Vocabulary. Congruent. Two geometric figures are congruent if they have exactly the same size and shape. Corresponding angles. When two figures are congruent, the corresponding angles are the angles that are in corresponding positions and are congruent. According to this picture, you can see that the green angles match in color, which means that these two angles are congruent. Also, you can say that they're congruent because they only have one arc on each of these angles. The blue angles are congruent over here because they have two arcs and they're the same color. And the red angles are congruent to each other because they have three arcs and they're the same color. Corresponding sides. When two figures are congruent, the corresponding sides are the sides that are in corresponding positions and are congruent. In this image over here, we can see that this side, which only has one tick mark, is congruent to this side, which only has one tick mark. And this side that has two tick marks is congruent to this side that has two tick marks. And this side that has three tick marks is congruent to this side that has three tick marks as well. Example one, naming congruent parts. Write a congruent statement for the triangles. Identify all pairs of congruent corresponding parts. Our first step is to write the congruent statement. When we are writing congruent statements, we want to follow a pattern. So we'll take a look at our first triangle, which is triangle ABC. And we'll say that triangle ABC, which goes from three arcs to two arcs to one arc in the angles, is congruent. And we need to follow the same pattern. So we're going from three arcs over here, which is P, to two arcs, which is Q, to one arc, which is R. So we can say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle PQR. Now let's look at congruent angles and sides. Angles are easy. For starters, angle A, which is in the first position of our triangle ABC, is congruent to angle P, which is also in the first position in triangle PQR. So we can say angle A is congruent to angle P. Angle B is in the second position of triangle ABC, which means it is congruent to angle Q, which is in the second position of triangle PQR. So angle B is congruent to angle Q. Angle C is in the third position of triangle ABC, which means it is congruent to angle R, which is also in the third position of triangle PQR. So angle C is congruent to angle R. For sides, we have line segment AB, which is this segment over here. That is the first and second letters of triangle ABC, which means it is congruent to the first and second letters of triangle PQR, which is this line segment over here. And you can see this line segment AB has three tick marks, so this line segment PQ, so we can say that line segment AB is congruent to line segment PQ. Next, let us look at BC, which is the second and third letters of a triangle ABC, which is this length over here. Notice how it has one tick mark, which means it is congruent to this length over here, which also has one tick mark, which is also the second and third letter of our name of triangle PQR. So we can say that line segment BC is congruent to line segment QR. For our last side, we're going to look at line segment CA, which is our third and first letter of our triangle ABC. CA is right here. Notice how it has two tick marks, which means it's congruent to this length over here that has two tick marks also, which is our RP, which is in the third and first position of triangle PQR. So we can say that line segment CA is congruent to line segment RP. Example two, using properties of congruent figures. In the diagram, DEFG is congruent to KLMN. Find the value of X, find the value of Y. 
Let's start by looking for the value of x. I notice that x is part of the variable expression for this line segment over here, which is mn. mn is the third and fourth letters of my quadrilateral KLMN, which means it is congruent to the third and fourth letters of triangle DEFG, which is FG. And so it's congruent to line segment FG, which is right here. Since I know that line segment FG is congruent to line segment MN, I know that the measures are equal, so I can set 5x plus 2 is equal to 12 and solve for x. So we start by substituting 12 for FG and 5x plus 2 for MN. Isolate 5x by subtracting 2 on both sides, and we get that 10 is equal to 5x. Isolate x by dividing 5 on both sides. 10 divided by 5 is 2, so 2 is equal to x, or x is equal to 2. Now let's look at part b. Find the value of y. y is this angle measure over here, which is angle L. Angle L is the second letter of quadrilateral KLMN, which means it is congruent to the second letter of quadrilateral DEFG, which is angle E. Angle E is right here. Since I know these two angles are congruent, I know that their measures are equal, so I can say that the measure of angle E is equal to the measure of angle L. I can substitute 111 degrees for the measure of angle E and 5y plus 6 for the measure of angle L and solve for y. Start by subtracting 6 on both sides. 111 minus 6 is 105. Isolate y by dividing by 5 on both sides, and 105 divided by 5 is 21. So y is equal to 21, or 21 is equal to y. Theorem 4.4, Properties of Congruent Triangles. Reflects the property of congruent triangles. Every triangle is congruent to itself, meaning that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ABC. Symmetric property of congruent triangles. If triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF, then we can switch places and say that triangle DEF is congruent to triangle ABC. Transitive property of congruent triangles. If triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF, and triangle DEF is congruent to triangle JKL, then by using the transitive property which gets rid of the middle guy, which is triangle DEF, we can say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle JKL. All right, checkpoint problems number one and two are yours. In checkpoint problem number one, find the value of x. In checkpoint problem number two, decide whether the triangles are congruent, justify your reasoning. All right, that's it from me. I'll see you all soon.